right, and welcome back to my Astro Imaging Journey channel. As you can see here, we're going to be doing part two, and that's going to be going over my camera settings. Here we have our camera right here, and here we have me. Hello. So, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into our phone here. And as you can see, I've already opened up the uh, PhotoPills app. So we're going to just click on Spot Stars. And as you can see there, I have it already set to 35 millimeter F1.8. And that says we should have 4.83 seconds or 9 seconds based on the uh, rule of 500. We'll probably use 4 or 5 seconds. Um, but What can we do? So let's first get the camera on here. And you can already see if we look up here one second. Okay, so we have all of our uh, settings up here. Aperture priority. Um, you know, sports landscape, uh, macro, what we're going to want is manual. There's a little line over here. Can't really see it too well, uh, but there is a little line. We want it to be on the M. So when we come back over here, when we come back over here, you can see we have an M on the screen and we switch it over clearly it's going to change on the back as well so we're going to want to be in manual mode we can change our on here we can change it we can just scroll through and we can do say four seconds or five seconds if we needed, say, seven seconds, we could use an intervalometer. Uh, but for now, let's just set it to five. We want it to be F18. That's fine. Our ISO, that one's going to be uh, 1,000. We'll have to determine that one when we get out there. Um, Usually 800, 1600, somewhere in there. Uh, I'll probably leave it at 1600 for now. And what else? Let's leave all the others. Oh, we don't want to do any bracketing. Uh, let's see, we don't want to do that one. We don't want to change our auto white balance. We don't want to let's see auto correct is off. Uh, we do not want to use flash. We are going to use manual focus. Sorry for that. We are going to use manual focus. Uh, so we don't need to worry about the auto focus point. Next is our spot metering, which is also we don't need to worry about. I'm going to want to use high speed continuous. Uh, we could do low speed, but it doesn't matter. Uh, given that we have a four second exposure time, um, given that we have a four second exposure time, uh, we're not going to run into any buffering issues with the uh, with the uh, writing the images to the card. So that is it as far as, and as you can see, I shoot raw. So, um, yeah. So if I wanted to go in, I could change that. Uh, raw plus JPEG, raw, or some lower resolution ones. Uh, I always shoot in raw and leave it be because that gives us the better um, 
data to work with in post-processing. As you can see, we should be able to write a little over uh, 1,500 files. So that gives us a couple hours. Next, let's go over and look at the side of the camera. Unfortunately, let me get a flashlight. So as you can see here, we have our autofocus and manual focus button. It's in manual focus right now, and we'll manually adjust our focus using this ring right here. As you can see, right now it's focused towards infinity, which is this little symbol right there. And you can also see it is set to 35 millimeters. Change that, that's 18 millimeters, and that's 35 millimeters. And then if I want to adjust focus, that's this ring up here. And it's kind of hard to see, but you can see it's going right there. Now, if we look in the window, let me get my flashlight back. If we look in that window, which I need to clean, but you can see six meters, two meters, three meters, six meters, or excuse me, feet. So this one, if we look right, right in the middle there, you can see two, three, six, those are how many feet away we are for focus and then uh, above six we have infinity so ideally we would expect to go to infinity and then we should be okay but as you saw i was about right there last time i did this it's not quite infinity but we'll show you the autofocusing later on. So we'll show you the uh, manual focusing later on when I get out into the field. So um, that is pretty much it in a nutshell. The last thing we're going to have is our intervalometer. So if I turn it on, and there we go as you can see right now it's set for zeros we could use that and we will use that and i'll show you how here in a second so here on the side of the camera you can see this little door and as i push it out you can see a mic a mic jack and on the top There we go. So you can see we have a mic jack and an intervalometer jack on the top. So we will plug the intervalometer into that jack right there. Okay, helps if I turn around and have some light. So we will just take that and plug it in right there. So now we have that plugged in and probably a little too close. So we have that plugged in right there. There we go. So it's plugged in, it's ready to go. I just need to plug in the other end of that. So as you can see, it's just a regular 3.5 millimeter jack. And this comes in handy. Uh, simply because, as you can see, it's hanging down right now. And if for some reason this fell, it just pops off of here and doesn't impact the camera itself. So that, that's a good thing to have. Now, what that also means is that there's additional ends. So if you want to use this with an icon or 
Olympus or some other um, adapter, uh, some other uh, camera. There's other adapters that can be purchased with it. So now, as we can see here on the with the intervalometer, we can turn it on. We can scroll through. We can change the time. We can change different things. Or what we'll do here, since we can go either uh, four or five seconds uh, using the built-in um, exposure setting, uh, we can just use this button right here. We slide it up, and here it went. And now you can hear it beeping. And all it is is it's simulating me holding down the uh, shutter button. And it's just going to continue until I release this. It'll finish up the last frame. And now we're done. So what we can do is we can look at the back of the camera while that's happening. So again, we're just going to push this up. And nothing appears on here. But you can see we dropped a few frames here, but we are at five seconds. We're still at all our good settings. So this is what I will be using, the setup I'll be using for this particular um, setup uh, to do the time lapse. It's a pretty decent uh, little lens, a little bulky for an 18 millimeter, but it is F1.8. Uh, all the way through the range from 18 millimeters to uh, 35 millimeters, which is really awesome. Uh, in case you're wondering, it is a Sigma. It's not a native Canon lens, but it's served its purpose. It works really well. So that's pretty much our setup. We got a, uh, our tripod is a ball head. Let me, so we have an adjustment here, which allows us to move this any way we want to point it. So the ball head makes it really nice. You don't have to worry about two different handles. And if I want to, I can uh, pivot on this axis as well. But we'll lock that down. Down here we have a little hook. It's hard, might be a little hard to see, but we have a little hook so we can put some weight. Okay, so uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, the uh, the nice little hook here. So if we wanted to, we could uh, put some weight there, really secure this down in case it was a little windy. You know, I'm on carpet, as you can see. I'm just moving it. But with wind, when I did Emerson Sky, it was kind of breezy out and I didn't notice anything um, noticeable, to say redundantly. Um, I didn't observe any uh, noticeable shake when I was doing those uh, images. So with that, I think we will consider this done. Uh, so this was part two in the series. Just wanted to walk through what my camera settings are going to be and how I'm setting this up. Um, Part three will be when it's actually time to get it up on um, the mountaintop and get this thing dialed in. 
and start imaging. So hopefully sometime in the next few days we'll have some clear skies up there. We'll be able to get uh, get an image and get some uh, time lapses going. Uh, but this is uh, a good one. But I do want to show you if I wanted to. So here's our intervalometer. Let's say I wanted to go through, so we have zero delay. And we can do a set. So that's hours, minutes, and seconds. And let's say I want to do two seconds. A one second delay. Uh, Oh, number of frames. Let's do two. So two there in the corner. And that's good. So we have two frames at two seconds with a one second delay. All we'd have to do at that point is just hit this other button. Now, if you noticed, we're still set to uh, four, five seconds on the camera. So in that particular case, so in that particular case, what we're going to want is to come here. And we're going to go, want to go all the way down here to bulb. So you can see there. Okay. All right, so that last test we did where we had two seconds, it only took the one picture because we were set to five seconds on the exposure here. So now we should get two frames. There we go. So if I wanted to, I could control uh, my frames from here. If I can dial it in, I can dial, I can let the camera control the exposure length. Either way, doesn't matter. Um, this will limit me to uh, 399. So if I go back in, oops, go back into number. See how it's flashing there in the corner? Three hundred and ninety-nine is the most I can do. So that can be a problem if I'm expecting to do more than uh, four, you know, four hundred or more uh, shots. We know we can do fifteen hundred with this uh, memory card, so. Since we can dial in four or five, four or five seconds, we will use this and we will use this button as opposed to uh, the settings uh, in the intervalometer and using that because then I'd have to uh, start it back up. So we'll just let it be. We'll use the camera set to five seconds and then just use the shutter hold uh, button down or option down here. So that should be it. Okay, so that should be it for this uh, episode, which was part two, uh, setting up the camera, making sure we're all good to go and uh, prepping it for when we actually head out to uh, the mountaintop and as we can see here, I will need to charge this battery and I'll probably take a second one uh, fully charged with me as well, uh, just to be safe. But that's it for this episode. Uh, part two, setting up the camera, getting it prepped and ready. Uh, part three will be getting actually going up there, 
uh, getting our focus, and yeah, we should be good to go after that. And then we'll be able to take our images. So part three will be getting focus once we're up there and um, actually getting our uh, images and our data. So with that, I'm going to say thanks everybody for watching. Really appreciate it. Please stick around for the outro. As always, please stay safe and healthy out there. Clear skies and have a good one. Thanks for watching yet another episode from the Astro Ninja Journey channel. Really appreciate your viewership. In our upper right, we have the latest video that I have posted prior to this one. Down in the lower right, we have what YouTube thinks you will enjoy. Below is a subscription link. Please hit that like button, subscribe if you so choose, ring that bell if you want to get notified of something new, and as always, thank you, clear skies. Remember to.